the Boilermakers won the toss and they will receive. Kick fielded by Horvath. Xander Horvath tumbles across the 20 yard line. It's a Purdue team that has been decimated on both sides of the ball by injuries. And on first down, they hand it off to Xander Horvath for a short game. This one meaning an extra little. Aiden O'Connell, the sophomore walk on throws incomplete for Milton Wright. It's third That's down. Completed. Just the third career start for O'Connell. Again, a sophomore walk on. The season is the fourth stringer. Elijah Sindelar went down with a broken clavicle. Jack Plummer went down with a broken ankle. Nick Stipe retired from football with a bad back. And it's O'Connell now to shepherd this offense through this final regular season game. And he's played relaxed over the last couple of weeks. A big third down opportunity here in the opening series. Third down, O'Connell throws down the field. He's got Jackson Antwerp for a first down and a game of the dozen. Relax, playing with boys, playing with the inner zone. That's exactly what O'Connell does here on a big third down opportunity. Watch him slide just to get outside the pocket, away from pressure, a perfect pass on the run. And they move the chains in this opening set of downs. Anthrop motions, empty set on first down. Screen pass to David Bell. The true freshman in the Indiana Territory all the way inside the 35. A gain of 31 per game. He has been shattered as a Roosevelt dollar, a freshman leading the Big Ten in catches. Bell has been outstanding with the loss of Rondell Moore on the outside. He's been the playmaker that Purdue has looked for for these explosive plays. There hasn't been many in the run game. There's been a little bit more in the passing game. That's what we like to see. catch opportunities by David Bell. 78th catch of the season. And again, he's been the guy in the receiving game with Rondell Moore out for the season. Moore only played in a handful of games before going down. One of the most electric players in the country. They thought about the free flicker, and then Horvath just runs it for a game of four. John, this is a Purdue offense, and sometimes they don't even try to run the ball because it's been so bad. But if they can get three, four yard games, that's something. Even the fake flea flicker, flicker actually freezes the defense and it allows the run game to get four or five yards on first down. That's a huge win for the Boilermakers. Horvath again to the outside, lowers his head, and another first down for Purdue inside the 25. Khalil Bryant made the tackle for the safety position for Indiana. In a rivalry type setting, you come out with emotion. I think Purdue right now at home, knowing they're not going to a bowl game, they're coming out with a purpose in this opening drive. O'Connell with time, looking for Bell and covered well by another freshman, Taiwan Mullen. That's going to be a fun matchup, not just today, but the next few years in this game. That's true. In the Big Ten, you have a lot of freshmen that are making their mark. And on both of these teams, you just mentioned Mullen on defense has really tight coverage on David Bell, who's been able to really create those big plays for a Purdue offense. And it's an offense that has been outscored in the last five games in the first quarter, 47 to three. So it means something to get points on this opening set of downs. O'Connell steps up, down the middle, intercepted. He was looking for Anthrop, it's picked off by Indiana. Ball comes out, but the defender was already down. Jamar Johnson, the interception in the end zone, and Indiana turns a promising Purdue drive into a turnover. Man-to-man -man coverage inside the red zone. This is where you have to make a play as a quarterback. This ball needed to be thrown away. That was perfect coverage in the back end by Johnson. And Indiana fends off an emotional Purdue offense on the opening set of downs. You're watching ESPN College Football as part of the Jiffy Lube Rivalry Series. All right. The sun died early Excited, on this final baby. Saturday Excited. in November. Indiana football inside its own 10 after an interception by the Hoosiers. Peyton Ramsey, the quarterback, it's been an odyssey for him. Was not the starter when the team broke camp and opened up against Ball State, but he's taken over for the injured Michael Penix. 
first down. He'll toss it to Samson James, who's close to the 20-yard line as we take a look at today's player spotlight brought to you by Exxon Mobile. So it's Peyton Ramsey, the quarterback. He's tough. He's efficient. He's a true leader. His completion percentage is terrific this season. His pass efficiency and the way he's played in big games, especially on the road at Penn State, I thought it really showed the character of a guy that's won his job back, not once in his career, but twice. He's put up big-time numbers in his last two road games. This is James again, a big-time recruit out of high school with his biggest run as an Indiana Hoosier brought down by Jalen Graham. And the running back stable a little thin for Indiana. Stevie Scott hurt last week against Michigan out today. And they've got two changes up front. Caleb Jones goes to left tackle. DeAndre Love goes to right tackle. It doesn't matter for Samson James, a guy that came into the game averaging just below three yards per carry, rips a big one off in his second carry. Indiana also without Matthew Bedford, their starting left tackle, second left tackle they've needed this season with Coy Clark out. Caleb Jones moves over from right to left tackle. And Devondre Love will start at right tackle as Ronnie Walker gets stopped at the line of scrimmage by Jalen Alexander. And Anish, this is a defense for Purdue. They played hard throughout the season. They may not have gotten the results they were looking for, but this is a group that runs pretty well in the front seven and will challenge Indiana up front. Just not a lot of depth for Purdue. Marcus Bailey, their best defender, is out. Lorenzo Neal has not played a snap all season on the defensive line. Cornell Jones is out. Against a three-man rush, Ramsey will run. He is in the Purdue territory. It sets up third down. We told you that Purdue has had trouble starting fast. Indiana has not, as we have a flag at the end of the play. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, defense, number 55 for Tawny, his first of the game, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Derek Barnes, a costly penalty, so instead of third down, it's first down, and that might be a rivalry game penalty. You have to be able to control your emotions when you're playing for so much between Indiana and Purdue. I remember as a player, Pitt Penn State, it's one of those things where guys are going to go crazy in the first five to ten minutes, and if you can withstand the bad penalty, the stupid play, the bad turnover, you're going to be able to settle into a football game. There's James again. Turbo's inside the 30 for a nice run, Let's seven yards on the play. Hoosiers do get back a piece on offense today, and it's a big one. Watt Fillier, their top wide receiver among the Big Ten leaders in receptions and receiving yards, and Fillier, number one in white, is so dangerous in space. He's quarterback friendly. He's open when the quarterback's ready to deliver the football, and that brings timing to your pass offense. Fillier in the slot at the bottom of your screen. Shot attaches. Second and short. This is James. He stumbles. There's a play. James a yard shy of the marker, but a penalty marker back at the line of scrimmage. Holding. Offense. We're 57. 10 yard penalty. Second down. That's the left guard, Harry Kreider. Right side of your screen at 57. In white just hooks Anthony Watts around the waist, and that's the hold. And that's going to bring Indiana behind the chains at second and 13 when they were in a good position to keep this drive alive. Rain continues to come down. Ramsey thought about the toss, he'll keep it. Goes down at the 29 yard line the and sets up third and five. Smart call by offensive coordinator Kalen DeBoer. Use your quarterback run because he's an asset. He can take some pressure off of the young Samson James at running back, and you get into position where you have a manageable third and medium. Two down territory here. They may rely on the young running back. Ram 
Ramsey faking the toss. And he'll move the chains for the Hoosiers. Barnes the tackle after a game of six. That shows some resilience in your offense, in your football team. When you can come back from a, a penalty where you have second and 12, and you're able to have two successive plays that you stack together and get back in a position where now you're in scoring, you're in the scoring zone. Indiana has a 13 to 15 play play bank that they come out of the gates with. And it's the plays that they run best. That's why they've been so good on their opening drives. Here's the tight end, Peyton Hendershot. He takes it close to the 15-yard line. Ian Ramsey, very close. Ramsey's Ramsey, when he struggled through the adversity early, a two-year starter who lost his job before the season. Hendershot, Hendershot was one of his guys. Well, you'd have to have that as a quarterback. I think this entire team respects what Peyton Ramsey did because he hung around. He didn't go into the portal. He didn't try to look for an easy way out. And now he has the respect. If he didn't have it before, I'm sure he did. But now he has the entire team and coaching staff pulling for him. This is James. Look at that pile. Plowing through that black and gold on Mott's for a gain of eight. And it's first and goal, Indiana. Samson James is a strong running back. When you have this big offensive line, that's going to help you move north and south. Look at that pile, that offensive line right behind Samson James, moving another five or six yards down the field to get it to the eight-yard line. They told us he can pack a punch, and he will run guys over. A four-star recruit who decommitted from Ohio State. On the ground again. George able to, James, excuse me, able to withstand it. Initial contact and got a yard. I like the way this drive has been a little bit of pass, a little bit of outside run, and then some strong running in between the tackles. Indiana is a very efficient offense once it gets into the red zone. They've scored in 18 of their last 19 red zone possessions. I look for the quarterback either to move the pocket or allow Ramsey to use his legs again once they're inside the 10 yard line. Nine rushes, just one pass attempt on this opening drive. Run. And James brought down right at the line of scrimmage by Big Lawrence Johnson. In the red zone, defensively, you must win at the point of attack if you're going to create negative plays. And that time they took advantage of DeAndre Love and Simon Stepanak on the right side. Johnson's able to split those two offensive linemen and get into the backfield and create a negative play. Filler in the slot at the top of your screen. Man coverage, that's where I would look, Anish. Ronnie Walker, better at pass protection. It running back. Ramsey moving the pocket. Looking, Angel wide open. Touchdown, Indiana. Walk Fillier. its opening possession in seven consecutive games and nine times in 12 games this season. And it's man coverage, and I think the time bought by quarterback Ramsey in the pocket, you just lose sight of the one guy you can't miss, you can't misidentify, especially in the red zone, and that's Villier. Logan just a shot for the point after. 39 of 30 this season. 40 of 41 on PAT. The Hoosiers with a 7-0 lead. Points off turnovers and the defensive breakdown we'll tell you about after the kick for Purdue. Wap Fillier, who did not play last week, sidelined with a concussion. Back for Indiana. And made his presence felt with a touchdown reception for the Hoosiers. take it out at the 25. What happened defensively for Purdue on the last touchdown? They wanted man coverage, did the Boilermakers on defense, but Devon Mosley's in the slot over the guy you cannot allow to run free. He plays a zone coverage in man coverage, and you can see his teammates looking at him after the play going, hey, 
Mosley, what are we doing here? You're covering grass. You need to cover Fillier, one of the most dangerous players on the field, especially in the in the red zone. So that was just a complete defensive breakdown in a critical on a critical play. You show up to take a Spanish test and it's calculus. I, I've done that. Check, check that box. Aiden O'Connell will throw on first down. It's caught by old reliable. Mason Hopkins, the tight end, only a yard. Devon Monster Matthews, the stop. Hopkins is one of those players that you have to depend on to have a big game. Even in this sloppy weather, he's going to have to make those tough catches in between the hashes and in between the numbers for Purdue's offense to have some consistency today. Don't be surprised if Indiana brings a lot of pressure on first and second down. They don't respect the Purdue run game. O'Connell throwing it downfield and a little too far for Ahmad Anderson, third and nine. Right now offensively for Purdue. Yeah, the goal is to get the ball to number three Bell and 89 Hopkins as often and as many times as you can. Well, you want to be able to win on first down if you're Indiana, especially if Purdue decides to run the football. Then you're going to get on second down a third down pressure because they want to force the hand of an inexperienced quarterback in O'Connell. Third career start for O'Connell, who is all set to go to Division Three, Wheaton College, and then decided he'll walk on at Purdue. O'Connell flushed under pressure, gets away from McFadden, throws on the run, and nobody home. O'Connell took a big hit back at the 10. Multiple flags are down. That's going to be another emotion mistake on defense this time for Indiana. And O'Connell grimacing. O'Connell did a great job of escaping pressure. Boy, I don't know. That wasn't, yeah, anytime, anytime the quarterback Two fouls the on football. the defense, holding defense number nine. That penalty's declined. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense number six, 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. I think anytime you're a defender and you're close to the quarterback and that ball's released, you have to have the mental discipline not to touch him, not even push him to the ground. I know the hit wasn't severe and I know it didn't look uh, all that vicious, but it's a penalty in 2019 if you if you do that as a defender. So instead of punting, Purdue gets new life and it's first and ten from the 41. King Daru, the true freshman running back, is in the game. O'Connell's pass is tipped. second and ten. And he's, that's another example of Indiana creating pressure at the line of scrimmage on first down with man coverage behind it and tight coverage on Bryson Hopkins. That's what they want to do. They want to make it difficult on the semifinalist for the Mackey Award at tight end for Purdue today. Hopkins, an all-conference tight end a year ago. His dad played in the NFL a long time as an offensive lineman. First for the Oilers, then Titans. A little misdirection. Here is David Bell. Only a yard, and that's where you miss Rondo. David Bell, the we talk here. about the struggles of Purdue running the football. More just the threat of him getting on the edge on the perimeter softens up the middle. It opens up room for other players and you just don't have it when you have David Bell on the outside or Milton Wright on the outside. You miss the motion, you miss the formations, and you miss the productivity that Rondell Moore provided Purdue's offense. What do you expect here from Indiana on a passing down, third and eight? You got to go to your playmakers. It's Bell or Hopkins on third down. McFadden bringing the pressure, looking for Bell. He's there right at the sticks. He'll move the chains for Purdue. Passing. The coaches raved about his ability to find tight spaces, his route running, the smoothness to his game. And he's at 6'2", so he's a good size target on the perimeter for Aiden O'Connell. This is a good throw. He bodies the receiver with the football. He put it right on his chest. Tunnel screen and Taiwan Mullen all over Bell for a loss. But a penalty flag from the far side has been thrown. Me out real quick. 
will be against Purdue. They may decline this. Illegal formation. Offense, number 10. The penalties decline. Second down. Good tight coverage by Mullins. Ended up being a tackle for loss. So you've got to you decline the penalty. You have second and 12 and make it a little tougher on head coach Jeff Brom to dial up a, a successful play to keep this drive alive. O'Connell looking for a slot man. It's incomplete. He wanted Anthrop. And third down, and we check in for the first time with Kevin Connors. Got a little hop in his step right now. The Buffalo Bills are nine and three. Bills are big a of a Bills cheerleader as there is. There's Bills Mafia everywhere in the country where I go, buddy. And yeah, they're louder these days. Daru has some running room. A north south runner, and he's to the 41. It sets up fourth down. And if you're Purdue, why not, right? Yeah, stay on the field. Try to keep this. Successful drive alive. Purdue's moved the football in this first quarter against a, a stingy Indiana defense. They just haven't executed in critical downs. They've had a turnover in the end zone with the interception, and now you're asking your young quarterback, can you find a couple of yards to stay on the field? Now here's where the deficiencies in the run game come into play. Fourth and two. I'm not even sure a run is on the table here for Purdue. You're right. They may have to take a timeout and talk about it. Timeout. Jeff Brom will do just that. And then 38 yards on three catches for David Bell. He needs 101 for a thousand. Fourth down. Purdue will go for it. O'Connell in trouble. Trying to get away. He can't. Sacked by Jerome Johnson. The fourth year junior, a three year starter. His fourth sack of the season. And oh, by the way, he's an amazing singer on top of it all. With the lack of running ability, you don't trust your offensive line. You have to be able to throw it on fourth and two, and Johnson's in there for the sack. They almost got O'Connell way back at their own 20-yard line. They were, they were forced into a penalty with the late hit, but now they get the football back just on the Purdue side of the 50-yard line. If you get a chance, go online and watch Johnson at the end of the year student athlete banquet for Indiana last year. He sang John Legend's this time, incredible pipes. You gotta check that out. Samson James up the gut to the 40 yard line, a pickup of seven. Chris Budden, who's down in the field, was covering that game last year. Chris is still tired from that game, she said. It was incredible, guys, just the amount of adrenaline. I, guys couldn't even get off to the sidelines, and then they get back up there and have a sack. Like, just the way that they fed off adrenaline for that game to continue going was phenomenal. Did you have your Fitbit? How many steps did you hit in that game? Uh, nine miles. Wow. I was also six months pregnant. <laughs> oh, Congrats. After a first down run by Ramsey, this is Ronnie Walker. We told you Indiana without its leading rusher, Stevie Scott. James and Ronnie Walker, a freshman and sophomore respectively, will get the bulk of the carries. And while the numbers don't bear it out this year, these were two highly acclaimed running backs when they got to the Purdue. The they were, and there are high expectations, I think, for the Hoosiers' rushing attack. When you have Scott, who's only a sophomore, and you had Walker, who's a sophomore, and James is a freshman, the future is bright for the rushing attack for Indiana on offense. They've got a pretty good running backs coach, too, on the sideline. Yeah, they do. Mike Hart, Michigan's all-time leader in rushing yards. They got a little game today. I heard. There's Walker, brought down by Ben Holtz. Middle linebacker for Purdue. A grad transfer from Western Kentucky. His dad, Nick, is the defensive coordinator. And when Ben came aboard to Purdue, he was expected to have a role. He's turned out to have a huge role, second in the Big Ten in tackles, and with all the injuries, boy, Ben Holt has been a godsend. Congratulations to Ben Holt, because he's a guy that came and got to play for his dad, and now he's trying to make big plays in a huge game for Purdue. Now, 
none bigger than third and four, trying to stuff out the run of Indiana. Purdue getting lined up. Ramsey will throw. He's got Fillier. Fillier has the edge and scampers out of bounds. Got just enough for a first. Knowing what you need in critical situations, that's why you go to Juan Fillier. He knew he needed four, he got five. Good, good throw, good accuracy on the edge by Peyton Ramsey on a tough day to catch and throw. He's able to make an accurate throw and let his playmakers do the work. And that will be the final play of quarter number one. Indiana has come out running the football. Rob, John Kajemi, Chris Budden with you from West Lafayette, Indiana. Regular season finale for Indiana and Purdue. The old oaken bucket on the line. And the Hoosiers threatening inside the 25 of the Boilers. To the outside, Hendershot, the tight end. Out of bounds near the 20 yard line. Ramsey's pass complete to Peyton Hendershot. It has been a run heavy approach for Indiana, and the rain could be a big reason why. Weather and success, that, and I would put it in that order. The weather is dictating what you can do throwing the football, and the success Indiana has had rushing it. Why not? I would stick with it using that big offensive line. And the young runners have been spectacular so far. Here is Ronnie Walker now in the backfield. Ramsey will keep it. Ramsey has an opening. First and goal for Indiana as we check in the first. With the keeper. When you're talking about the rain, you can already make a difference on the field conditions where I'm standing. You start to see some divots. I've also seen the Indiana wide receivers have to change gloves as well. Now something to watch for as this you game continues. On the eight yard line. First first the divots on the field. Getting patchy at certain spots. James back in there. From the eight, James to the five. Already a career day for the freshman from Avon, Indiana. 65 yards on the ground, his previous career high, 36. Not a lot of hesitation with Samson James. He's very decisive as a runner. He sees a hole or a crease. He's going to get north and south with some power and move the pile. Just a terrific job so far through a quarter and a couple of plays in the second. He was a part of what's been billed as the best signing class in school history. This crop of freshmen, little pop pass, it's David Ellis. He's got some speed, trying to get to the outside and brought down from behind by Navon Mosley, who had the busted coverage early, and I thought maybe a horse collar? I thought so as well. It looked like that was going to be a penalty as Ellis gets to the outside. You get that name played, but if your hand gets inside, no call by the official there. It looks like the hand is still on. Boy, that's a that's Awfully a questionable. Close. That's a questionable one. You could have gotten a flag there easily. Not one you could review either. It's third and goal. James. And he'll be marked down just shy of the end zone. Fourth and goal, and if you're Indiana, you go for it? Absolutely, you get on the line of scrimmage, but I'm not so sure you broke the plane. Now, that would be a reviewable play. All scoring plays or plays that are in question. I, I thought he broke the plane with the football initially. There is a question. That is a reviewable play. Ramsey, quarterback sneak, he's in, and Indiana up two scores. That's a statement drive by the Hoosiers and their redshirt junior quarterback, Peyton Ramsey. He did everything on that drive, orchestrated the passing game, was able to get into the zone on the quarterback sneak on fourth and goal. He's been efficient through the air, and they've run a number of plays, 12 plays on their first drive, 11 plays for 47 yards, taking advantage of what the defense provided and taking just over five minutes off the clock to extend their lead. Tom Allen's Hoosiers, seven and four, and a lot's been made of the soft schedule, but Indiana's beaten the teams that they're supposed to beat for a team on the ascent. 
But it was the loss to Penn State where nationally a lot of folks looked at Indiana and said, you know what, these guys can play. They woke up and they went there to play Penn State with the intention of not losing a good game by seven points. But they were one play away. The fake punt that didn't go their way, I, I felt turned the football game in the direction of Penn State. I think Indiana played toe to toe for three plus quarters with a very good football team. And I think that that shows the type of toughness and execution they can play with. Short kick. Horvath from inside his own five. Across the 20 in the rain to the 25. Ohio State looking to be that number one seed in the college football playoff final rankings. They'll get the winner of Minnesota and Wisconsin in the Big Ten Championship. Minnesota, Wisconsin playing today as Orvai loses a yard. The injuries have ravaged Purdue's season. So much of the season narrative is shaped by what if, what if Rondell Moore was healthy and could team with David Bell? What if you had a veteran QB and Elijah Sindelar who was leading the country in pass yards before he got hurt, and then defensively, Bailey, Neal, Jones, big factors. That's the longest Purdue run of the season, and he's inside the Indiana 30, tripped up by Jawan Burgess. 48 yards. They hadn't had a run longer than 30 all year. Xander Horvath said, what injuries? I can do the job on the ground. You're right, only two rushes over 20 yards this season. And now you break out the ball deep in your own end, and you have instant field position inside the Indiana 30-yard line. Just a, a really explosive play on a team that's looking for those types of players to emerge. Looking for those plays, too, especially on the ground. Horvath again. Inside the 20, breaks a tackle, and thunders inside the 10. 20 more for Horvath. How about that? Two runs of 20-plus on this drive and two runs of 20 plus in the first 11 games. These are the types of plays in a rivalry type game that you make when you're looking up at the other team and you want to have an answer with just over 11 minutes to go before halftime. This would mean everything for Purdue if they can now finish. They've been in this position before. They have to finish this drive with six. I'll try Horvath again and he is squeezed right at the nine. You're right, Purdue's first two drives both ended in Indiana territory. One on an interception in the end zone, the other a turnover on downs. And this is the 19th first and goal of the season, and they've scored every time they've been in this situation. 15 of those going for touchdowns. Horvath motions out. Gets it from O'Connor. Horvath, using that big body of his, brings it inside the five. Burgess, the tackle. It's third and goal. Xander Horvath has seen a bigger role in the rushing game this season after being an H-back type last year. Even though you've had struggles running the football all season, this drive has been the most success Purdue has had on the ground. You have to rely on your offensive line, and it looks like Horvath to be able to push this two or three yards on two downs here. O'Connor. Rolling out. And so nearly intercepted. Raheem Lane got his mitts on it. And it's fourth down. And there is a flag down on the far sideline at the two yard line. Might have been an offensive lineman downfield. And that was a receiver downfield. Offense number 79. Penalties decline, fourth down. And the kicking team will come on, led by J.D. Dellinger. Anish, you talked about finishing, and those are the types of things that lead you to a four and seven record. When you're struggling, you make some big plays, but you just don't have enough talent or execution at the time to finish. Dellinger perfect inside 40 this season. This is a 20 yard chip shot. And Purdue is on the board. A Dellinger field goal has put the Boilermakers on the board, but Indiana leading 14 to 3. No punts in this game. 
Purdue's been in Indiana territory on all three of its drives. Indiana has scored a touchdown on both of its drives. It's all about finishing, and that's what Indiana has done when they've gotten inside the red zone. Purdue needs to take a page out of that book. Line drive kick. It is fielded by the upback. And Brian Fitzgerald to the 27 yard line. This season, Taco Bell is celebrating student sections and passionate fans like these by awarding the Lip Moss Student Section of the Year, the Purdue Boilermakers Student Section, already on the national watch list. Go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see how your school can compete or get the committee's attention by using hashtag Lip Moss Student Section Contest. A lot of rain gear is out. We wondered about the crowd, the students, many of them on break, but pretty good crowd considering the weather uh, in this part of the country right now. Cold and rainy. Samson James up the middle. Another nice run, 11 yards, a first down. Here's Kevin Connors. Ben Holt, who leads the charge to drive him back. And uh, Chris, that's the coach's son, and it's not all candy and sugar playing for your dad, right? Yeah, you want to come play for your dad, and you're going to get an earful when you're not doing what you're told to do during uh, after that last goal line, the fourth and goal. The defense coordinator, Nick Holt, knew exactly where Peyton Ramsey was going, and he couldn't get his guys lined up. Ben comes over, he's giving him an earful. That was so obvious. Why didn't you get lined up? Dads are tough, especially if they're your coach on the defensive side of the football. On that first down play, he found the football and was in the right gap. There's a reason your son works in hockey now, right? That's right. Ramsey tripped back behind the 30 like he was Edmund Dantes trying to escape the Chateau deep. That might have been the first time that the field was a factor in cutting. Ramsey goes to his right, no room, all four makers in black jerseys. And there you see the turf just give as he's giving ground to get around the edge. He was trying to get to that Indiana sideline, but a big loss on second down. Now third and 14. Protect the football, crucial here on third down. Ramsey flushed. Backpedaling, and he just throws it away toward the Indiana sideline. And we'll have our first punt of this bucket game. Good defense, Outside smart play game. by the quarterback to throw it away. Let your punting unit come on and kick the football back. You don't want to give momentum to Purdue after they just drove the length of the field and got points. Whitehead, the 24-year-old Australian, a left-footed kicker, averaging 42 a punt. Fair catch is signaled for by Jackson Anthrop. He lets it bounce. It dies on the wet turf at the 25, a 46-yard kick. Purdue ball, 7.47 to go in this opening half. Purdue with the football after the first punt of the game. They've been in Indiana territory on all three drives. They've been able to move the football. It just hasn't resulted in six points. It hasn't resulted in touchdowns. You get an interception, you're on downs in the second drive, and you finally cash in with a field goal when you needed a touchdown. So this is this is a team that's been able to run the football today where they haven't all season long. And a gain there of three yards for Horvath. Purdue has 81 rushing yards in this first half. They average 74 per game. That's third worst in the FBS. Only Akron and West Virginia have a worse rushing offense. This football team is gritty. They, they like to play tough on both sides of the football. They've had success. They just won't need that explosive play. Going down field and complete off the hands of Milton Wright, the freshman. That's the play Purdue needs to win the game. Those types of 
opportunities down the field where you're going to get an easy 40 or 50 yards. O'Connell puts it close on the money on a tough day to throw the football. You have to make that catch. I don't care if you're a freshman. Milton Wright needs to come up with that reception because those are the types of plays that are game changers. Wright, another big time recruit. The recruiting uptick has been noticeable under Jeff Brom. And Milton Wright, a Louisville kid just like Rondell Moore. That's right. Brom's ties to that city and Moore's success here, a big reason Wright chose Purdue. season for Purdue. Offside. Defense, number 87, made contact. Half the distance to the goal. He beat the try. Bryson Hopkins has been one of the best tight ends, not just in the conference, but nationally. His second catch has brought Purdue closer, and now Dellinger with a PAT to make it a four-point game. Bryson Hopkins' 72-yard touchdown catch, pulling the Boilermakers closer. Longest play of the, of the season for the Boilermakers, 72 yards. They've had a couple of explosive runs, shortest drive to get their first touchdown in the afternoon. So a lot of things starting to turn in a rivalry-type setting. You're always in the football game, and that's now Indiana's job. How do they answer with their offense and their experience at quarterback? Given this crowd a little life as well. Indiana will take it to the 25. Let's take a look at Do More in a Jiffy brought to you by Jiffy Lube. There's two players on offense you have to really be cognizant of if you're Indiana. Bryson Hopkins is one of them. I think Cam Jones, the linebacker, he needs to get his hands on Hopkins at the line of scrimmage. He has a safety over the top, but he allows Hopkins the inside leverage. He played outside shoulder, and it played right into the hands of O'Connell and Hopkins. Hopkins never touched on the 72-yard touchdown. That's exactly how you draw it up. Indiana's defensive coordinator, Kane Womack, said, you have to be physical with Hopkins. He'll eat you up if he can work in space. You have to get your hands on 89. Ramsey to the air, and he's got Nick Westbrook, the fifth-year senior, who picks up 11. Westbrook had a 100-yard game against Purdue last year. Indiana. Westbrook's one of those guys that you have experience on the outside, so you got the playmaker fill your back in the lineup, and you, you have a reliable guy on the other side. Ronnie Walker into the secondary. Walker thunders into Purdue territory, 15 yards for Walker, his longest run of the season. This is exactly how a 7-4 and four football team should answer. They come back with an explosive play through the air, and they move the 
the line of scrimmage off the left side with Caleb Jones and Perry Kreider providing some running room for Ronnie Walker. Walk failure in motion. It should be quarterback run. Blake Lock winding down. Ramsey pumps. Looking for Ellis and finds a Purdue assistant coach. Ramsey it's a tough day to control the football if you're a quarterback. And, and I think Ramsey has done a really efficient job in the pocket to be in shotgun all the time when it's wet, the ball's a little bit slick, and the ground isn't great to be able to maneuver and cut on. You have to really be efficient in the pocket as a quarterback. And if it's not there, throw it away. What can you do as a former QB when you've got a wet ball? Look up, look up at the sky and pray that it gets on target. You have to be able to, you have to be able to be on time. I think if you're late on days like today, time, that's Adam. when you can turn the football Indiana, over and give the defense first, a chance. Time out, Indiana. Time second out. and ten. Did graduate though from NC State. Okay. Got a grad transfer and uh, did get a degree from Wisconsin as well. Ramsey over the middle, wide open, Rock Villa. Another first down for Indiana. As a kid, he loved Whoppers, and he was a little Whopper, and then just Whopper, and then Whop. Full name is Mr. Elias D'Angelo Fillier, but everybody just calls him Whop. I think that's awesome. And those are the easiest throws, getting back to your question. In between the hashes over the middle, those are the easiest ones to control on a day like today. Here's James Hoosiers have been averaging about six yards per carry, and that's another nice run. How right on average is Samson James? This guy is just putting the shoulders north and south and getting behind that big offensive line. What a an extended debut, I guess, for him with Stevie Scott out of the lineup. It's been Walker and James for the Hoosiers on the ground. James, 132 yards on the season entering today. 82, which is a career high for one game in the first half. Ramsey will throw it back to his tight end, Hendershot. Slips one tackle. Hendershot inside the 10. Still on his feet. And takes it down to the three-yard line, a gain of 24, Peyton to Peyton. Beautiful play call by offensive coordinator Kalen DeBoer. He gets full flow going to the wide side of the field. And his athletic quarterback, Peyton Ramsey, finds Hendershot to the short side. And nice run after catch for the 6'4", 255-pound tight end. Illusion of going to the wide side, come back to the short side, and Indiana's knocking at the door inside the five-yard line. Hendershot has seen a bigger role in Kalen DeBoer's offense. Middle blitz, James. Second and goal. Good play by Johnson. Lawrence Johnson, that nose tackle, right in the middle of that Purdue defense. He's able to get through it. Great penetration on first and goal. He's a big body, only a redshirt fre uh, red freshman. We talked about the youth on Purdue with all the injuries. That's another player that has a bright future for the Boilermakers. And he's getting some time there this year because Lorenzo Neal, who got hurt in this game last year, has not been able to suit up all season. On the ground, and James trying to push that pile with the second effort, turned back. And then slips in. Indiana saying it's a touchdown, no signal yet. The officials will confirm. Didn't hear a whistle. And now, going on the field to touch the touchdown. Like the gopher in Caddyshack. He went under, then <laughs> popped out into the end zone. Well, we were waiting for a whistle, but credit Samson James in the offensive line again, pushing the pile until he could break free and find a way into the end zone. That's just terrific effort by a freshman running back and smart by the offensive line to get behind that offensive push to get him into the end zone. That's their third trip into the red zone. Three touchdowns today for Indiana. There was no whistle, like you said, and he never went down. It is a touchdown for James. 
third of the season for Sampson James. And a point after is good by Logan Justice. Sampson James, one of the highest rated recruits to come to Bloomington in school history, decommitted from Ohio State to sign with Indiana last December. He's an Indiana kid from Avon, offered by Notre Dame, Penn State, Georgia, Florida State, a top 300 recruit, and it speaks to the uptick in recruiting by Indiana. Certainly we've seen it with Purdue as well since Jeff Brom took over for the Boilermakers, and in the grand scope of this rivalry, you get the sense if both coaches stick around in the years to come, this game could have much higher stakes. Guys like Rondell Moore, players like Samson James, if you can consistently get one or two a season to be able to add to your young youth that you get at other positions, at the line in the line positions, you get those skilled type players, it changes the entire dynamic of where you want to be in the Big Ten. What's the value of a high school running back looking at Indiana and seeing that Mike Hart is the running back's coach? I want to play for one of the guys that's done it at the highest level. And you you can go back, and it's not that long ago. You can go back and, and research that on your own and, and watch it at Michigan when Hart was a running back. He's the guy that's going to be your mentor. Why not? I want to be on that team. Horvath from the four. Taken down shy of the 20. I don't see a flip flop between Ohio State and LSU if both went out. I will say this nationally, we fixated on the Clemson close win against North Carolina. Look at the scores of Clemson's game since. They've destroyed people. And a gain of four on first down for Purdue. Do not see on the Clemson Tigers. I, no one's really even talking about them, and that's scary because they are loaded. They have the experience of winning championships, playing in big time games. And I think we did put a little bit too much onus on a loss on the road where, hey, you're going to, not gonna play at your level, at that top level every week. Low throw, incomplete for Anthrop. Third down coming up. And it was a win against North Carolina. Ugly right. win, but a win. Right. And if you're looking at all the data points, that's the outlier. That's right. They've annihilated everybody else. It hasn't, it hasn't been fair for everybody else. Trevor Lawrence, by the way, did get off to a slow start this season, but he has been lights out down the stretch. Your Purdue, you have to find David Bell again or another playmaker and Bryson Hopkins. That those are the two guys you have to try, try to feed on third down. O'Connell pops, throwing downfield, high up to the receiver in Ahmad Anderson. Anderson had a double move. He beat his guy, and O'Connell's throw led him by way too much. Wow. Just another opportunity at an explosive play. This one would have went for six points. That's the third time that Aiden O'Connell has tried to go, I don't know, 40, 50 yards down the field. Hasn't completed that pass. One was right on the money. That one was just overthrown. Brooks Cormier will punt it away for Purdue. Reese Taylor waits at the Indiana 40. Zach Collins is the normal starting punter for Purdue. Taylor chased back across the 40. And now the Hoosiers can tack on good field position. 2.23 to go. Empty set, first and 10 from the 44 of Indiana. Ramsey has Billiard. He's got all sorts of space. Billiard accelerating inside the 20 in Indiana in the red zone. That guy, that open. Talent. 
talent and a wet field. I know where I'm going. You don't know as a defender where I'm going. And a lot of traffic. That's just a crosser where you get linebackers running into your own players and you're able to spring free, free Fillier for a huge play. Hoosiers can open it up before halftime. James, he will run you over to the 15. James the ball carrier. Taken down by Jalen Graham, and Graham felt the brunt of it. I just like the style of the young running back. He almost looks like Marshawn Lynch when he's going through those piles and he's getting hit, but he continues to fall forward. I, it's, it's amazing for a young guy that has so much energy and trying to put his best foot forward with this opportunity. He's making the most of it today in a rivalry type setting. He's close to 100 yards, and here we are still in the first half. Ronnie Walker spells James. Ramsey under pressure and set. George Karloftis, the crown jewel of this Purdue recruiting class, as we get a timeout by Indiana. And he's been one of the best Their freshman second. defensive players in this conference. That's seven sacks on the season. And just a terrific job of winning his battle at the line of scrimmage and finding the quarterback when Purdue needed to create a negative play. They compared this kid to Ryan Kerrigan, and Chris, he has some story. He has. He, his whole family moved over to Greece. His parents had met here at Purdue. They lived in Greece, but until when he was 13 years old, his father passed away from a heart attack suddenly. I spoke to his mom, Amy, yesterday. They have three other siblings. She told me about 14 days after the dad passed, she realized, I need to come back to West Lafayette. That's where her whole family is. Grandma, grandpa, they're able to be here at every single game. There's about 20 of them that come. She told me it's been so amazing just to be able to come here two miles away from their house, see her son play every day before big games. She sends him a picture of him and his dad for a reminder that he's upstairs looking down on him every game. This kid has a bright future. And he was in Purdue's backyard, West Lafayette kid. What's amazing, he never played football until he was 14 years old. Didn't know what a tackle was, didn't know what a first down was. Forget three-point stance. That's unbelievable. And, and the success he's had in only his freshman season, he's the team leader with tackles for losses. Now he has seven sacks. One of those guys, another right spot and future for Purdue on defense. And now Purdue saw out, something Purdue. defensively. They First call second. timeout. It'll be a 30 second timeout. George Karloftis, West Lafayette High School. You can see the press box of Ross Aid Stadium That's amazing. from where his high school was and where he played. If you don't, if you're not successful recruiting George that close to Ross Aid, you're in trouble. And and what a what an unbelievable story by Chris. And, and what a it, it just you you love to hear that about guys that are being able to to go through the, the trials and, and, and the sorrow that he has losing a, a father and being able to come out and, and have his mom watch how successful he is, not only as a player, but as a young man growing up in, in, in a very difficult situation. He was the number one player coming out of the state of Indiana. The number two player also went to Purdue. That was David Bell. Mm -hmm. We told you how Indiana's recruiting Purdue has Done well on the recruiting trail as well, and Karloft is literally, literally in their backyard. Well, Indiana needs some yards here to try to get points on third and long. Need to get the eight-yard line. Miscommunication. Ramsey picks it up off the ground and then slides down at about the 22-yard line. And maybe the youth there of the running back, James led to that as it's fourth down. I think you're right. Ramsey's trying to give him the football, and I think the exchange point, Ramsey's going backwards and the young running back going forward, the last thing you wanted was to leave that on the ground. So alertly, Peyton Ramsey gets on the football and is able to take a negative play, turn it into a positive play as Purdue takes a timeout here with 46 seconds left to go before halftime. Fourth and 13, ball on the 22-yard line. Justice, the kicker for Indiana, is a perfect 14 of 14 this season. And on the sidelines, I think that's what Mike Hart, the running back coach, was talking to 
Samson Janes and quarterback Peyton Ramsey about that exchange issue. Let's straighten that out going to the third quarter. When we asked the coaching staff, where do you miss Stevie Scott the most? They said critical moments, short yardage, and protection. That was one of those critical, critical moment. moments yeah. where a running back with a little more seasoning has a better understanding of what to do. And I think in those situations as well, you have to almost predetermine that's a, that's one of those read inside zone reads. You want to be able to give it to your to your running back, get positive yards so you can get justice in a position where he has an easier field goal opportunity. So justice 14 of 14 on the season. We'll look to make it a 14 point game. This from 40. And for the first time this season, with a little wind blowing, Justice misses wide, and Indiana comes up empty. And a little wind blowing in the sails of Purdue right now as they head to halftime. They still have an opportunity to score points with 54 seconds left in the first miss of the season. That's a huge win for the Boilermakers on defense. They come up and take advantage of a, of a fumble on third down. Don't allow Peyton Ramsey to make a big play, and they get the miss on fourth down. Guys. Down to Chris. I was watching Justice pregame, and this was the direction that he was struggling, anything from about 35-plus yards because of the way the wind is blowing from right to left. Purdue now with less than a minute. Hopkins makes the catch and tackled immediately by Andre Brown, fifth-year senior out of Georgia. Clock continues to run. Let's see what Purdue does. Boilermakers out of timeouts. O'Connell downfield and Justin makes the catch. Wow! He slipped, fell, and still adjusted and caught it. How athletic is David Bell? He jumps off the turf with a huge play. Clock is started now. O'Connell has Anthrop. That was a mistake. He should have thrown that ball away. To spike it right now. You have to spike the football. Clock running, 10 seconds. And O'Connell will spike it. Nine seconds. The ball at the 37-yard line. Sports Center top 10. Here comes David Bell. Off the mat. What a grab. He tracked the football the entire way. It looked like Mullen was going to make the interception, but Bell ends up making the reception and keeps the drive alive before halftime. This is a kid who has three games this year with at least a dozen catches. He has been the focal point of opposing defenses, and it has not waned his production. O'Connell has time, looking for Anthrop, complete, and there's a flag at the end of the play with three seconds to go. Marcelino ball on coverage, and Purdue could have a chance for three. Well, that's going to give them enough, enough yardage on that's the penalty. That's interference. Defense, number nine, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Just moments ago, Indiana was on the verge of making this a 28-10 game. Good job by O'Connell and his presence in the pocket just to get this football close. It looks like ball is running stride for stride with the receiver, makes contact inside the 10, and that's going to allow the special teams to try to tack on some points for Purdue right before halftime. It'll be Dellinger from 39. He's perfect inside 40 this season. And his kick is no good. So two missed field goals by both kickers right before the end of the first half. Energy on, on a play caller that you can depend on the running game instead of just relying solely on throwing the football to have success. Indiana brings it out to the 25, down to Chris. 
Coach, how has the wind and the wet weather made a difference in what you're able to call today? Well, it definitely is a variable, but it obviously affects both teams. You just got to be able to protect the football. You got to keep running the ball. It's a big part of our plan, and we got to keep executing it. We've seen Purdue's had some explosive plays. What will be important for your guys to remember for this last half? Well, eye discipline. You know, we just had some mistakes there, third and long. You can't give up that kind of pass. You know, we uh, just got to execute better on defense, can't not give up the big plays. We've got to finish. Thank you, Coach. You're welcome. Chris brought in with Tom Allen just a little bit earlier. Indiana with the ball to begin the second half. Empty look for Peyton Ramsey, named after Peyton Manning. Ramsey stepping up in the pocket, he'll run. Takes it to the 30-yard line. They have a saying at Indiana that Tom Allen brought with him when he was the team's defensive coordinator. L-E-O, love each other, it permeates through the entire program, you see it in the locker room, you see the insignia in the building. And Tom Allen told us nobody embodies that like Peyton Ramsey. A starter for two years, he lost the job in the offseason to Michael Penix. Had a lot of respect, a lot of love on this team, and that love and respect grew in the way he handled the adversity as James picks up the first down. Well, I think you're right, and it's how you build a football team to be unselfish to spend time together it's the foundation as tom allen says of who we are as a program and i love you when you have leaders like peyton ramsey and you have young guys like samson james everybody kind of pulling in the same direction and that's how you create that's how you create a culture of winning and a consistency of how you want to do things and it starts with the quarterback ramsey ramsey hands it off here to james there's that line again, pushing that pile forward for a first down. It's been James's turn today, 11 more north of 100 yards on the afternoon, Chris. Anish, it's that love and respect that's why Ramsey stayed. I talked to him this week, and he said, you work so hard to build a trust with your teammates. I couldn't just turn my back and enter the transfer portal. There wasn't even an hesitation or a thought. Nick Westbrook, one of his best friends, I talked to him as well. He said, you thought we had respect for him before. Now having stayed and been the leader while he was on the bench, it's built even more. Ramsey will keep it. Slides down. They give out an LEO award after every game. Ramsey got it after the first game. That's when he was a backup to Michael Penix. But everybody in the locker room, everybody in the coaching staff appreciated the way he stayed the course. Chris, you talked to him. When he wasn't the starter, that stung. Yeah, one of the things I thought was interesting was he talked to his dad, and his dad said, you're more valuable than just a quarterback. What you give to this team is more beyond just the field. They always say you're only one play away, and, and that's true for both of these teams, especially with Indiana and having a veteran quarterback stepping in and guiding the ship to this seven-win season. Ramsey down the middle. Field. You can't bring it in with one hand. Ramsey got his chances early. Penix had been in and out of the lineup with injuries and then finally went down for good in the Northwestern game back on November 2nd. That's when Ramsey became a full-time starter. He's won with it. 71% completion rate, one of the best marks in the country. And he's been lights out in his last two road starts. 371 yards against Penn State, 351 against Nebraska. I think you go to Fillier here on third and medium. Ramsey looking that way as Fillier makes the catch. Now he's in space. He's lethal in space. And brought down by Thiedemann inside the 20-yard line. A gain of 29 for Wap Fillier. Five catches, 86 yards today after missing last week's game with a concussion. Terrific poise in the pocket. You know you're going to take a shot, but you got to get it close to your most dangerous possession receiver in space and Fillier breaks the tackle of Mackey and then gets some extra yards. You gotta find playmakers when you have to convert on third down and Fillier's that guy. 96 yards, I robbed him of 10. <laughs> it leads the Big Ten in yards after catch. And lit up is Ramsey. Dedrick Mackey on the corner blitz. That's the answer Purdue needed on defense. Mackey missed the tackle on Fillier the play before. He comes on the short corner blitz. 
and luckily Peyton Ramsey hangs on to that football. That ball almost comes out on the hit. Remember, Indiana has some changes to its offensive line. Matthew Bedford, the left tackle out. So Caleb Jones moving from the right side to the left side. And you got Devondre Love moving into the starting lineup at right tackle. And I'm sure if you ask Peyton, he would tell you, that's my guy. I missed him. Play game. And now a delay of game. Five yard penalty. Take it down. So a promising drive again, stalling here in the red zone for Indiana. They get into the red zone with Wap Villier, a sack, and now a penalty, and you're looking at second to 22. And these are the types of plays that turn games. You have a big defensive play after a successful conversion on third down, and now Indiana going backwards. And the wind is really starting to pick up, so field goals may be out of the question now. Ramsey under pressure again and brought to the ground. Karloft has got his mitts on him first. Derek Barnes finishes it. And now the ball all the way back at the 34, and it's third and improbable. And Ramsey slow to get up after those sacks. Purdue turning up the heat, winning those one-on-one -on -one matchups on the line of scrimmage. Just a great job by Sullivan pushing into the lap of Ramsey, and it's cleaned up on the sack by Barnes and Indiana has not scored in the last five opening possessions of the second half. Right now they're going backwards. They need some yards here on third down. They'll just run it to Ronnie Walker stuck in neutral and a drop by Anthony Watts and it's fourth down. They had the ball inside the 20 now out of field goal range in these conditions. Guys very similar to what happened before the half. You felt like Indiana was going to go down, tack on an easy touchdown. They miss a field goal, and now they go backwards on three consecutive plays after it looked so promising coming out after halftime. Indiana did not call a timeout. They're letting the play clock run, so maybe backing up their punter to try to pin Purdue. Now the delay of game penalty. Delay game. Purdue has the opportunity Offense. to decline this. Penalties decline. Or down. Gamesmanship. It's rivalry time. Whitehead's punt. On the wet turf. Rolling. I think that got into the end zone. It did for a touchback. Touchback. Purdue will take over at the 20. It sounded like a good idea this morning. Xander Horvath. And he's close to 100 yards rushing. Looked like the ball might have popped out. Indiana says they have it. And the Hoosiers do. Looked like Mullen was on the bottom of that pile for Indiana. On what turned out would look to be a, a successful run by Horvath. Going on the field is a fumble recovered by the defense. There it is. First down uh, Indiana. By Mullen, and it's Mullen that actually gets on the football at the end of this scrum. What a terrific, aggressive play by the freshman corner out of Fort Lauderdale. I believe there's seven players from the state of Florida on defense, maybe? Seven starters. starters. Tom Allen was a high school coach in Florida, and getting Florida talent is a big part of his recruiting plan. Mullen comes from some pretty good bloodlines. His brother, Trayvon, played cornerback in Clemson. Yes, he did. They love this kid's confidence. Indiana shook up the secondary midway through the season, and Mullen's been a starter of the second half. Hoosiers ball from the 35. Ramsey steps up on the pressure again. It's been a steady pass rush from Purdue, and Derek Barnes has his second sack. The last four offensive plays have really been negative plays for Indiana in terms of being able to drop back, protect, and have some success. 
we were talking during the break maybe Indiana should go back and just run the football the old traditional way try to get some points out of this promising field position. A Rod Lloyd into the backfield sophomore walk on out of Indianapolis Westbrook in motion bunch look. Ramsey over the middle completes to Westbrook right at the marker and he appears to have enough. That time defensive coordinator Nick Holt decided to only send three. The pressure's been really confusing Ramsey in the offensive line. This time Purdue backs off. Ramsey has all day to throw and he's able to find a receiver to have success. 11 out of 14 today. I'd like to see. I'd like to see Holt go after Indiana offensively. That's where they've had success. Let's see if Purdue brings pressure again. The downs have not mattered right now. Fillier again getting man-to-man -man coverage. Here's the blitz. Ramsey gets rid of it going downfield. Incomplete for Miles Marshall, the 6'4 freshman. I like the pressure of being able to predict when that ball's going to come out of the pocket. Anytime you give Peyton Ramsey that much time to survey and ha have his receivers have time on a slippery surface, it's advantage offense. And again, the way the wind is blowing, you don't really feel comfortable right now with your kicking game for both teams. I agree. Even though both kickers have been solid all season, Ramsey gets rid of it, threw it behind the failure. Even that ball seemed like it was blown down to the away from the receiver and that that wind is coming off of the Indiana bench blowing towards the Purdue sideline. John is this four down territory. It could be. I, I don't think this is a, a, a situation where you want to depend on three points or an opportunity for three points. I think you may be in four down territory here. Fillier in the slot closest to the line of scrimmage. And it's man coverage again. Ramsey throwing downfield. End zone incomplete. He wanted Freifogel. And it's broken up by Mosley. That's just a terrific effort play by Devon Mosley. He played through the receiver all the way to the ground. This is a good throw by Ramsey. He gives his receiver trifle an opportunity, but when you play through the receiver's hands and eyes all the way to the ground, that's textbook defense. So a field goal attempt for Justice, who missed his first field goal of the season earlier today from 40. This from 42. And he missed that one. And this is not all on the kickers. The conditions are a big variable today. Three missed field goals today, two by Indiana and Logan Justice, who was perfect on the season coming into the game as King Daru is dropped for a loss. Chris, yeah, a give us an idea here about the conditions. Well, the wind right now at about 12 miles an hour. When I talked to the coaches before the game, both said they need about a 10 extra yard cushion when you're kicking against the wind. I've also been down here watching Justice warming up right now. They have a hard time because of so much rain on the sidelines. It's been so muddy that they can't even really warm up very well. O'Connell's got all day. Daru is wide open. Lost the football, but they say he was down at the 46-yard line. Reese Taylor with the tackle, a gain of 23. John, I think what Chris is telling us, that means the coaching staffs have to rethink offensive play calling and strategy once you get into scoring range. You get inside the 40, boy, I, you it's really... It's four-down territory. It's got to punt be. the football and just make him go 80 or 90, the opposing team. Because the way the defenses have come out and played in the second half, points are going to be hard to come by. You want to play field position, and you want to be smart about your, your four down opportunities. Both teams missed field goals right before halftime. Indiana then just missed one. 
Tom Allen's team, though, has an 11 point lead. A chance to get to eight wins today for the first time since 93. School record for wins is nine. Two freshmen from Amarillo, Texas, sets up third and manageable. With Purdue having some success on the ground, this third and very short is an opportunity where they don't have to solely rely on throwing the football. They can think about using the run because they've won some at the line of scrimmage moving Indiana off of that line. Bryson Hopkins, the tight end, is in motion. Purdue keeps it on the ground. Daru is going to be close. I think he's going to be just shy of the first down. Where the linesman on the Purdue sideline is walking in, I think it's just short of a first down. It looks like Purdue's going to go for it if they're short. They will measure. You're Purdue, you're four and seven. There's nothing to lose. No, you roll the dice, the dice right? here. Absolutely. As good as your defense has played coming out after halftime and, and right before halftime. Yeah, it's a, it's a definite opportunity to go for it here on fourth down. It's going to be about a half a football to a football short, I believe. Day where the turf's not as as tight as it should be, your offensive line needs to get those feet in the ground and move the opposition. Offense out, fourth and short. O'Connell under center. O'Connell quarterback sneak. Looks like he got it with the push. I think he got it by about the distance that they missed it on third down. That was oh, with the keeper. a tough <laughs> first conversion if it stands. And it looks like they're going to get the first down, but O'Connell going off the right side, trying to move the pile. It's going to be very close. So they will measure once again. I agree with head coach Jeff Brom. I think this is a poor spot by the officials. It looked like O'Connell got to the 44 yard line. Now you can challenge the spot when a first down is in question. It's just that much short. Just short. It looked clear to me that O'Connell, once he made that second effort after he was hit, reached the 44 yard line. Let's take another look. He's going to bounce out to the right side. This is a job by again. Indiana winning that battle line of That second effort looked like he got to the 44 yard line and the officials disagreed. And again, that is a reviewable play. You can look at that. Jeff Brom not happy. Three missed field goals today, two by Indiana and Logan Justice, who was perfect on the season coming into the game as King Daru is dropped for a loss. Chris, yeah, a give us an idea here about the conditions. Well, the wind right now at about 12 miles an hour. When I talked to the coaches before the game, both said they need about a 10 extra yard cushion when you're kicking against the wind. I've also been down here watching Justice warming up right now. They have a hard time because of so much rain on the sidelines. It's been so muddy that they can't even really warm up very well. O'Connell's got all day. Daru is wide open. Lost the football, but they say he was down at the 46-yard line. Reese Taylor with the tackle, a gain of 23. John, I think what Chris is telling us, that means the coaching staffs have to rethink offensive play calling and strategy once you get into scoring range. You get inside the 40, boy, I, you it's really, four down territory. It's we'll got to punt be. the football and just make him go 80 or 90, the opposing team. Because the way the defenses have come out and played in the second half, points are going to be hard to come by. You want to play field position, and you want to be smart about your, your four down opportunities. 
Both teams missed field goals right before halftime. Indiana then just missed one. Tom Allen's team, though, has an 11-point lead. A chance to get to eight wins today for the first time since 93. School record for wins is nine. Two freshmen from Amarillo, Texas, sets up third and manageable. With Purdue having some success on the ground, this third and very short is an opportunity where they don't have to solely rely on throwing the football. They can think about using the run because they've won some at the line of scrimmage moving Indiana off of that line. Bryson Hopkins, the tight end, is in motion. Purdue keeps it on the ground. Daru is going to be close. I think he's going to be just shy of the first down. Where the linesman on the Purdue sideline is walking in, I think it's just short of a first down. It looks like Purdue's going to go for it if they're short. They will measure. You're Purdue, you're four and seven. There's nothing to lose. No, you roll, roll the, the dice, dice right? here. Absolutely. As good as your defense has played coming out after halftime and, and right before halftime, yeah, it's a, it's a definite opportunity to go for it here on fourth down. It's going to be about a half a football to a football short, I believe. Day where the turf's not as as tight as it should be, your offensive line needs to get those feet in the ground and move the opposition. Offense out, fourth and short. O'Connell under center. O'Connell quarterback sneak. Looks like he got it with the push. I think he got it by about the distance that they missed it on third down. That was with the keeper. a tough <laughs> run conversion if it stands. And it looks like they're going to get the first down, but O'Connell going off the right side, trying to move the pile. It's going to be very close. So they will measure once again. I agree with head coach Jeff Brom. I think this is a poor spot by the officials. It looked like O'Connell got to the 44 yard line. Now you can challenge the spot when a first down is in question. It's just that much short. Just short. It looked clear to me that O'Connell, once he made that second effort after he was hit, reached. 44 yard line. Let's take another look. He's going to bounce out to the right side. This is a good job by again. Indiana winning that battle line. Stream. That second effort looked like he got to the 44 yard line, and the officials disagree. And again, that is a reviewable play. You can look at that. Jeff Brom not happy. But they are looking at that last play. We'll step aside while they do. The replay booth reviewed the last spot, fourth and short. O'Connell was initially ruled short of the first down after measurement. You need indisputable evidence to overturn the call, and you weren't going to find it. And so the call on the field stands. It's a turnover on downs. Jeff Brom living, and it's Indiana ball. I agree with Jeff Brom. I thought his quarterback, O'Connell, had enough for the first down on fourth. But it gives Indiana excellent field position. This is the full third time in this game they've had the football beyond their 40 yard line, but they've only come away with one score out of that excellent field position. That's credit to the way Purdue has played on defense. They run it with Sampson James and John. It feels as if Indiana has to get back to the run game. It worked so well early. They do. And, and, and James was a big part of that. And I think carrying the the pile forward. This offensive line needs to get going, take some pressure off 
of the passing game for Pete Ramsey. This is a difficult day to throw the football. If you can run it with any efficiency, that's what you need to do. James. How many times have we seen that? James runs into a host of black shirts and then he moves the ball to get a push. Here's Kevin. Samson James or Ronnie Walker, and your chances of securing the football in between the tackles are a little bit stronger than that perimeter throw. Fillier in the slot, second and eight. Playmaker a chance for six points, and that's exactly what happened. Another bust in coverage by the Boilermakers secondary, who has played well today. But the two busts have resulted in touchdowns. The two mistakes ends up in 14 points, and that can't happen against a team that can take advantage. You have the experience on the position of quarterback and wide receiver. They give each other the nod and say, hey, nobody's here. There's nobody in center field for the Purdue defense. Theoman is supposed to get over. He's playing center field, but you're in man coverage. It's the exact same bust that led to the opening touchdown against Purdue in the red zone. Half Second touchdown for Villier, sixth career 100-yard game, and another monster afternoon for the junior from Tampa. Seven catches, 135 yards. He had huge games against Nebraska and Rutgers and Michigan State. Was out last week, suffered a concussion against Penn State, did not play against Michigan. And with the injury to Stevie Scott, having him back, boy, that's a big piece on offense returning. It is. It's huge. I mean, you have playmakers at a lot of positions. And that's why I think head coach Tom Allen is so excited about this seven-win season, trying to make it eight. You're going to get five wins in the, in the Big Ten, which hasn't happened in I don't know how long. It's just unbelievable how you can kind of grow with confidence when you have a couple of wins that you maybe in other seasons you don't get. You get them this year, and now you build upon that. Fair catch. Purdue ball to 25. 122nd meeting all time. The first bucket game took place in 1925. 
the seventh most played rivalry in the FBS. Sandro Horvath with a nice run as we say hello to Kevin once again. Enormous. Eight yards per carry. First down run by Horvath, tackled by Raekwon James. A hundred yard game for Xander Horvath, Richard sophomore construction management major. And for a non existent running game, the one bright spot on offense today for Purdue has been Horvath and, and the way they've been able to create explosive plays. Now, Purdue's had its chances. O'Connell pumps, he gets hit. It's caught by David Bell. Listen, this may come off as hyperbole, but Jeff Brom's words here. He reminds me of the young Jerry Rice. There's a smoothness to his game. Not a burner, but it's the route running, and that's what Jeff Brom was getting at. How about the athleticism to put himself in those positions to come off the ground and make catches? Jackson Embrook makes the catch inside the 30 at Purdue. As they've shown all season, the injuries are not an excuse. Still showing fight, down three scores. Partner, can they finish? That's been the big question in the first half, and now late in the third quarter, they have to take advantage of these explosive plays and not rely on three-point opportunities as we see a wholesale change on defense for Indiana. Hockey-style line change. Two tight ends. They may be one short. They may be one player short. Hopkins! And he's down at the one yard line. Yeah, you're right. They only had 10 guys on the field. Yeah. I think number 11 was standing on the sidelines, and you're supposed to be on Bryson Hopkins. You can see. I think it was Bryant Fitzgerald that was yelling to the sideline, we're a player short. And that was an easy pitch and catch from O'Connell to Hopkins. Horvath is in. Seeing some rarities for Purdue today. A rushing touchdown. That's just the eighth rushing touchdown of the season. Entering the game, only Akron had fewer rush TDs. They've got a 100-yard rusher today. They've been able to run the ball with some consistency and still very much in this ball game. And now both teams offensively have taken advantage of poor communication on defense and breakdowns on defense. PAT by Denver is good. As we get into the later stages of a rivalry game, what matters now, John? Discipline. How, the emotion's worn off now. How well can you execute? How well can you decide on third down where your players and playmakers are? Not about plays, but who to get the ball to. I think all those things play into huge effect as we near the fourth quarter. What? One forty-four to go in quarter number three. Purdue has won this game two years in a row, and the bucket has stayed in West Lafayette. In some ways, the pressure is off for Indiana because the last four years, they went into this game having to win to become bowl eligible. This year, they took care of that a while back. Remember, they started seven and two. They've lost two straight. But Purdue also playing with house money. Hey, they're four and seven. This is their last game of the year. They can afford to take a few more risks. And they might down the stretch. I don't I don't think anywhere on the field, if it's close to the 50-yard line, will be other, nothing other than four-down territory for head coach Jeff Brom and the Boilermakers on offense. Jeff Brom has a lot of tricks up his sleeve. And you can never rule out anything, even an onside kick. Trick plays, big part of what Purdue does. Indiana has it at the 25. That 
that is an injury, if it is significant, will reverb for some time in the college football landscape. Flags down. There is no foul to play. Charge timeout, Purdue, their first. There's Samson James, pinballs off a few defenders and picks up a couple. James with the carry. Indiana's been in pretty good control of this football game. But I think it's important now. They're gonna start dominating on the ground again. They need to get some of those old-fashioned first downs where they start wearing on Purdue defensively because Purdue's defense has gained some confidence in the third quarter, and I think they're gonna carry that in to the fourth quarter. And unless Indiana takes it away from them, they're gonna continue to pressure the line of scrimmage. Those are the types of plays that this Purdue defense has made in the third quarter, and it's made a difference in the momentum of the football game. Discipline, staying on the edge, setting the edge, has contained. That's number 55, Derek Barnes, who stays at home and plays true on the quarterback run. Six TFLs for Purdue today. Walker in running back, it's partial in motion. Well, if you're Purdue, you're looking for a turnover here on third and long. Try to get your hand on the football. Five-man pressure. Ramsey steps up. Ramsey has the 30. And thunders to the 35-yard line. He may have the he first down. What, a, what an Ramsey effort with the game. by Ramsey. What a tornado to cross, and he's got it. And that'll be the final play in all likelihood of this third quarter. When you're decisive as a quarterback and you decide, hey, there's nothing there in the passing game, and you know you're close to the sticks, I'm not going out of bounds. I'm going to duck my head and get the first down, and that's exactly what Peyton Ramsey did. Tom Allen's message, L-E-O, love each other. And Indiana 15 minutes away from bringing the bucket Back to Bloomington. Purdue's won this game two years in a row. First play of the fourth quarter. Westbrook downfield. The big connection from Ramsey. Indiana with another red zone chance. The experience of Nick Westbrook getting behind the Purdue secondary. Watch him lay out for this one. He knows he can't get it in stride. The catch more important than trying to run through that so he leaves his feet. Peyton Ramsey had plenty of protection on that big play. Great way to start an explosive first play to start the first fourth quarter. Samson James makes up a few. Nick Westbrook dreamed of being on ESPN one day, and we have the proof. He was out visiting Disney World. It was ESPN day. He was having fun. Tickets for this. He stole a sign. It's still so He took a sign that they gave him that said ESPN. He wrote on it, I want to be on. In his own handwriting, he pinned it up to his wall. It stayed there through high school, and now it's come to fruition. He's had some big games, too, in his career. Six 100-yard games. James is met by Watts, no game, and it's third down. And we mentioned the kicking game being problematic for both of these teams because of the wind. It is, and it's probably a little bit easier going in this direction. And it's good to see Anthony Watts back in the football game. He left the field in the third quarter with an injury. He gets back for the Purdue defense as we have an injury on the Indiana side. And that's Samson James who's had the bulk of the carries today with Stevie Scott, the team's leading rusher, out. Both teams have used five different starting quarterbacks combined. It's all pressure from defensive coordinator Nick Holt here on third down. Man coverage across the board. Loading up the box. Ramsey has Marshall. He's open. And Marshall 
He's going to be about a yard shy of the bunker, mostly with a key stop, fourth down. Go for it. It's a decision you have to make. I think you try to take the points if you can. If you trust your kicker, we just two in the other direction. I would, I would indeed get points here, if at all possible, with your kicking game. Tom Allen might want to take a timeout and talk about it as this clock rolls down. Offense still out there, but Ramsey is walking slowly toward the Indiana sideline as the play clock continues to count down, and the Hoosiers look like they will think about it. Timeout is called with the play clock at one. March timeout. After a timeout, Indiana on fourth and one will decide to kick a 26-yard field goal. Logan Justice 0 for 2 today, but had not missed all season entering the game. And this kick is no good. Now 0 for 3. Logan Justice had missed three kicks in 32 attempts in his career. Entering today, he's missed three today. O'Connell finds David Bell. Gets past Mullen. Bell so smooth, the freshman out of bounds at the 26. I've been impressed the way Purdue has continued to battle back and find a way to stay in this football game with their defense. Yes, they've taken some opportunities with missed points from Indiana on special teams. They keep coming up with plays like this. Orvath having the best game of his career, picking off a first down. Orvath, with an update on Justin Fields, here's Kevin Connors. Continues that rivalry has become one sided as Morbach picks up a couple. Let's rewind here just a bit. Indiana missing another field goal now, 0 for 3. And for Tom Allen's team now, you've got the ball, and if you're in the Purdue territory, your kicker's now 0 for 3. I gotta believe his confidence is shot despite the success he's had. The kick is off the table now. He's standing next to Tom Allen, and he'll watch fourth down, I believe, from now on. Indiana has an opportunity to go for it on fourth down, they're going to. Or they're going to punt the football away. O'Connell looking for Bell. Broken up by Bell. The freshman quarterback against the freshman receiver. Both of them incredibly confident, but it's the DB who wins the battle. And I think Bowen got away with a little bit of grab on David Bell at that last moment. No call, no foul, but I think he got away right there. He had the jersey of David Bell at the last moment. The officials did not call it. This is a good battle on the outside by two young players. Now big third down for Purdue. sack of O'Connell, but there was one downfield in the Indiana secondary. There are two fouls on the defense, holding defense number three. That penalty's declined. Personal foul, face mask, defense number 47, 15-yard penalty from the end of the play, automatic first down. That's the second time. The does not have to leave the game for his helmet coming off. Here's the foul. That's the second time a Purdue drive has been extended because of one of those unnecessary plays. James Head was called for an unnecessary roughness, a late hit earlier, and now 
You got McFadden, the face mask. They had O'Connell dead to rights. Yeah, Mc, all McFadden had to do was come under control and tackle the quarterback. I think he went for the knockout shot, lost leverage, and grabbed anything he could. And the first thing that he held onto was O'Connell's face mask, which ripped the helmet off of his head and moves the chains for the Purdue offense. Aiden O'Connell, redshirt sophomore, or rather a sophomore, a walk-on, began the season as the fourth stringer. You got a walk-on center and Sam Garvin snapping him the ball. The right tackle for Purdue. Two redshirt freshmen who've been splitting time. Left tackle Grant Hermans has battled injuries the last few years. Left guard didn't play the last two years. Purdue trying to find a way with all the injuries and this piecemeal offense, and they pick up four as the catch is made by Bryson Hopkins, who's got a 100-yard game today. Two straight 100-yard games for Hopkins, who had a couple of TDs last week against Wisconsin. There's Horvath. He's won well. Sheds a tackle. Gets past the end into the secondary, and that's 230 pounds. Not easy to bring down. He picks up 19 more. Eight wins. Shio Nofuanga Totoa went down on the last play. Appears to be okay, standing with the helmet on over on the Indiana sideline. First and ten, Purdue in Hoosier territory. Horvath, he buttons out of trouble. Plows forward to the 20, a gain of five. Allen Stallings the tackle. The biggest difference today for Purdue on first down, they've had successful running attempts. They've been able to get three, four, five yards on first down on the ground. And that's something that simply has escaped this offense during the regular season. 154 yards on the ground. That is a season high. Horvath having a career game. O'Connell, the walk on, throws downfield, flags down. Bell did come up with it somehow. And he stayed in bounds. It's a catch of the three if it stands. May have been a defensive hold inside the 10 yard line. Holding defense for nine. Hilly's decline. Results of the play, first down. That's on Marcelino Ball. David Bell. Now going to the thousand yards receiving for the season. Seven catches today, and he now has 84 receptions, tops of the Big Ten. And that's the third acrobatic catch we've seen him have such great body control to come down with the reception. And he draws the flag. We're starting to see that too. How many penalties has he drawn today? Three. chance to win this game, but boy, David Bell and Rondell Moore a year from now. That is a receiving tandem to dream on. Well, he, he's just so aggressive when he's running his routes, and he has good body control, so he can get himself in a position where as a defensive back, you have no choice but to grab and hold on. Here is Horvath. Bullies into the end zone. Purdue's not giving up the bucket that easily. Purdue will go for two to make it a three-point game. Why not? Ten plays, 80 yards, taking three minutes and eight seconds off the clock. And what a day for Horvath on the ground. That's been the biggest surprise of the afternoon. Purdue has been able to run the ball. We have not said that often all season. Your bucket list, they kicked it way off. We said, let's see if they can get to 100. They'd have a right. chance. And, Route 155. Two point conversion attempt. O'Connell pumps. Dumps it off. Horvath dropped it. <laughs> With a win today, Indiana would secure a winning conference record for the first time since 93. 
That was also the last time Indiana won eight games. They can get to eight with a win today. Purdue has won the old oak and bucket two years in a row, looking to make it three straight against the Hoosiers for the first time since 2014. Xander Horvath, a couple of rushing touchdowns, 144 yards, and he has resuscitated this Boilermaker ground game today. It's been unbelievable. This is That was the big question coming into the game. Yes, Purdue could throw the football, but can they run it? Can they sustain some time of possession and then cash in? They've done a little bit of everything today. And this kick goes out of bounds from Indiana with the ball at the 35. Kick off out of bounds. Kicking team. Ball will be placed at the 35-yard line. First down. This season, for every field goal and extra point made by participating universities, Allstate will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. That's the first kick I think that's gone through the post today. It was from Allstate. That's been a big storyline. That might have been B-roll. <laughs> Ronnie Walker ran into a roadblock. Remember, Samson James got injured early in this game. Indiana down two running backs right now. Stevie Scott did not play today getting injured last week. Peyton Ramsey down the middle. And it's brought in by Miles Marshall for a first down. Here's Kevin Connors. Clemson will get Virginia and the ACC championship. Ohio State will get the winner of today's game between Minnesota and Wisconsin, the Big Ten title game. Now into Purdue territory. Walker brings it to the 41. We mentioned no Samson James. We saw him limp off the field. The other issue now for Indiana, no faith in the kicking game. Logan Justice has missed three. Purdue knows that. How does that impact how the Boilers can now call defense? Well, I think they can be a little bit more aggressive on defense. I think that allows Nick Holt to challenge the receivers on the perimeter a little bit and then show blitz and then come out of it as well. So you play the mind game with quarterback Peyton Ramsey. Ramsey will take a shot. Too high and complete for Freifogel. And it brings up third down. Taking a shot down the field. I like the aggressiveness. Head coach Don Allen wants to play. Keep his players just on the edge. And that was a good shot play from around the 41 yard line. But now it brings up a third and medium, a third and seven, where defensive coordinator Nick Holt. He's going to play that pressure game as well. Last time he showed pressure, came out in zone. This time I think he's going to bring an extra play, a body in the pocket. Hoosiers have been good on third down today. Ramsey under pressure, escaping. He's got room to run. He's got a first down. And Ramsey takes it all the way to the 21. I do not know how Peyton Ramsey got out of that one. That should have been a sack and a punt opportunity from the Purdue defense. There's two players, three players in the offensive backfield that cannot contain Kate Ramsey. He's able to stumble to the 20 yard line. That's twice today on third and long. He's made a play with his feet. One, one for 15 yards right in front of the Purdue bench. This time he's been able to get it down inside the 25 to the 20. But last, now they have to cash in. And the last three red zone trips empty. Walker, no room. Lost a yard. Walker Jr. Walk him here. Jamal 
Charles Campbell, a redshirt freshman from Tennessee. The backup kicker is getting warmed up. He has not attempted a kick in his Indiana career. And I would think that's a difficult decision for head coach Tom Allen. You would love to see your offense get in a position where you could go for it on fourth down. They've got David Ellis now in the backfield. Pressure, Karloftis. It's caught by Westbrook. Able to turn that into positive yards. Near disaster for Indiana averted. More pressure in the offensive backfield applied from this Purdue front seven. You're right, Anish, this is a dangerous play. A critical play made by the quarterback, Peyton Ramsey, is able to lead the sack in the negative play, get it out to Nick Westbrook, who's able to turn it into positive yardage, but still third and eight to overcome for Indiana. Man coverage again from Purdue. I think you pressure the pocket. You got to see the, well, it looks like they're backing out now. They, they have more of a shell look in that second there. Ramsey flushed. Throws on the run. It's tipped and broken up. Dedrick Mackey with the PBU. It's fourth down. And now Charles Campbell is ready for his close up. Mackey's the player that has been most dangerous from the short side on the blitz. This time in coverage, he's able to get a hand on the football. Almost turns it into a turnover for the Boilermakers. Campbell, excuse me, I said he had not attempted a kick. He's attempted one kick in his Indiana career, and he made that. It was from 48 earlier this season. This, a 36-yarder to make it an eight-point game. Get a whistle before the kick. Play game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. That can't happen. And I think head coach Tom Allen's wondering what happened. When you have a new kicker who may not be comfortable, ready to go, the, the holder, the snapper, you've got to be cognizant of the play clock. You had two timeouts. Coach is asking that same question on the sidelines. So now this becomes almost a 41-yarder. And Campbell comes through. Big spot, freshman kicker, rivalry game. Logan Justice missed three, uncharacteristic for Justice, who had missed a kick all season. And Campbell, even with the five-yard penalty, knocks it through. Campbell was clutch, not once, but twice. He had the delay of game where he knocked it through. You walk back five yards, it's good, and how does the coach feel about it? Pretty confident. So now Purdue needs a touchdown and a two-point conversion to tie the game. Three of the last four games in this series have been decided by one score. Indiana and Purdue play for the old Oaken bucket. It's a rivalry that has a lot of meaning in this state. Tom Allen told us he has family and friends, some who are Purdue alums, some who are Indiana alums. It divides households, maybe more so than politics in some parts. Jeff Brom, season three as Purdue's head coach. Two for two in these bucket games. Snyder will kick it off for Indiana. And Purdue starts at the 25. Clutch in a huge rivalry type setting with 5.08 left to go. Horvat has to come up with a couple of more runs to extend drives and maybe break the game, or at least put Purdue in a position to tie it. Aiden O'Connell throwing underneath, and he's got Milton Wright down to Chris. Well, before they ran out there, this Purdue offensive line gathered together, and they said, this one's on us. When I talked to O'Connell this week, I asked him what gave him confidence. He credited his offensive line for not allowing him to get touched and giving him the courage to stand in the pocket. 
Aiden O'Connell, the sophomore walk-on, hands off to Hulva. Running with purpose today. Bulldozing through the leisure defense. Hulva and with the carry. Territory. This is amazing what Xander's doing on the ground. This hasn't been done all season for Purdue. And let and as Chris said, let's credit that offensive line. There's been plenty of room to run at the point of attack in between the tackles, and Horvath's been able to bounce it outside on occasion. Play action. O'Connell in trouble. Throws complete to right. And a first down catch of the 30-yard line. Really good awareness by Aiden O'Connell. He had pressure coming from the backside. He's able to elude it, keep his eyes downfield, find right down inside the 35-yard line, and Purdue moving with quickness with 409 and counting left to go in this football game. Pressure off the edge. O'Connell buying time off his back foot. And incomplete way over the head of Hopkins. Aiden O'Connell with a chance to craft a legend here at Purdue. Doesn't matter what happens after today. A kid who was thinking of going to Wheaton College, a D3 school, where his older brother Patrick is a D lineman, instead chose to walk on to Purdue a couple of years back. Jeff Brom told us, you know, when they looked at him, that yeah, walk on quarterback, sure, why don't you come here? They never expected him to play in meaningful games. Horvath bottled up finally by this Hoosier defense. And now a critical third down. We've got two downs now to make 10 yards. That's the position the Purdue offense is in. And I would expect the pressure on the pocket where Aiden O'Connell's trying to hold up and set up office is going to be extreme here on third down. O'Connell led the team down the field against Nebraska. Man the game winning drive. Man to man coverage on the outside. David Bell against Mullen, wide side of the field. That's where I would look to go with the football. He may get a holding or a PI. Instead, over the middle to the tight end, Hopkins, who stretches across and a first down at the 20 for Purdue. I would say Bryson Hopkins is a pretty good second option if he's in that rotation. Easiest throw today on a tough win day is over the middle, and that was a really good, accurate throw by O'Connell. Three 100-yard games on the season for Hopkins. O'Connell, downfield, watch balance broken up by Mullen. Uh, it's been fun to watch those two do battle all afternoon. We have three more seasons of that battle because this has been unbelievable. What high level at receiver and corner They've been going back and forth. That's where I thought they'd go on the last play when they found Hopkins for the first down. You got to credit both of these guys. Terrific competition on the perimeter at the skilled position. O'Connell rolling right, throws, looking for Bell. He was engaged by Mullen. No flag on the play, it's third and 10. Boy, it looked like. Taiwan Mullen had one hand on the receiver and one hand batting the football down. It looked like he contacts Bell with one arm. Oh, that was a pretty good play. He came off in time. There was contact both ways, so I think that's a good no call on the play. It looked like Bell initiated the contact. Yeah, you're right. O'Connell in the direction of Bell. Just to the match to catch. Purdue a two-point conversion from tying this game. What an adjustment by David Bell. This is the fourth catch that he's had to make an acrobatic movement with his body to get in position to catch the football. He goes away from Mullen, and credit Aiden O'Connell just getting it close to his playmaking receiver in the end zone. A conversion away from tying this one up. David Bell lined up at the bottom of your screen. Purdue 0 for 3 on two-point conversions this season. 
and a timeout. First timeout, Indiana, Indiana the timeout. they're second. The Hoosiers this will be a 30-second timeout. Series. They've won two straight. Indiana on the cusp of an eight-win season and a winning conference record, something the Hoosiers have not done since 93. And it comes down to a two-point conversion for Purdue. Looking to tie it here. I would look for some kind of rub or pick on the outside. You've got two and two on the outside. Hopkins in motion. Horvath in motion. O'Connell has a man wide open. It's Hopkins. And we're tied at 31. Credit the scheme of Brian Brock, the head coach Jeff Brock. That's just, you win by, you won by scheme on that two point conversion. Indiana had no answer because if you go man to man, you have to have somebody to account for Bell on the outside and Hopkins. You can just see the confusion wide open. You never want to see somebody that wide open on a two-point conversion. And now you've got a 31-all game with 2.48 left. They told us Aiden O'Connell, his best traits, his composure, calm, in control, and marching Purdue down the field. But there's 2.48 to go. Indiana has a timeout. If you're a Hoosier fan, what worries you the most right now is what if this game comes down to a field goal? You've already missed three on the day. It's a very difficult day, no matter where the kick comes from. 25 yards, 20 yards, 30 yards, it's still a challenge. The challenge now is to get in position to make that kick, and, and that's going to go to the Indiana offense, who's moved the football with efficiency the whole day. They just haven't been able to capitalize on that field position. They've been in the red zone three times in this half, and in three instances, they have not scored. And Charles Campbell, remember, came out for the last field goal, which he made from about 40 yards. Logan Justice 0 for 3 today, so you'd have to imagine it's going to be Campbell, a redshirt freshman who's kicked two field goals in his career if it comes down to him. from the five. He's got great speed. Bounces into the outside. Ellis accelerates across the 40-yard line. A terrific starting field position for Indiana. If the Hoosiers lose this game, they will point to missed opportunities. Three field goals by Logan Justice, who was perfect all season coming into the game. Tough conditions, a lot of wind, a lot of rain early in this football game. You, you, if there's one guy that you thought was going to come through for Indiana, it would have been their place kicker. And you got to remember, too, this is a team that does not have Stevie Scott, their leading rusher today. He's been out, got hurt last week. Samson James, who ran for 100 yards today, got hurt in the second half. He has not returned. Starting left tackle, also out today. There's no one on the outside to the receiver. Incomplete for Marshall, and on the far side, Freifogel was wide open, and if Ramsey looked that way, Indiana had a touchdown. This is the second time that Purdue's defense has had a bust. There's no one at the top of the screen. If Peyton Ramsey sees this, this, is, this could be game over with 236 left to go. And they're late getting over again. Purdue trying to get lined up defensively. It looks like they'll bring pressure. Ramsey wants to change things up. Play clock at five. Down to two. Ramsey looking for Fillier. Incomplete. He was out of bounds. And it's third and ten from the 43. This is a fun position to be in if you're a quarterback, because you want to be able to make the play, and gosh, Fillier had one foot that was towing the line right there, half of his foot in, half of it out. So now you come up with a third down opportunity, and Peyton Ramsey needs to come through, find his playmaker. You gotta find Fillier again here on third down. 
Ramsey in trouble. Floats one for Fillier. Can't bring it in with one hand. And it's fourth down. A lot of pressure by Purdue in the pocket. Really delayed Ramsey in his read. Fillier was coming on the under route. A lot of traffic. He gives him a chance. I think if Fillier lays out, he may have this. But the pressure in the pocket delayed the read down the field and the pass. And Ramsey, all he tried to do was give his opportunity, his wide receiver, an opportunity to catch the football. That's going to bring on the punting unit. Anthrop back for Purdue. Whitehead's kick. Indiana keeps it out of the end zone, and Purdue will start at the two. Jalen Williams with an outstanding special teams play. Williams showed speed as he was going down, pursuing on this punt opportunity. The ball never crosses the goal line. That's just good awareness by Williams to keep that football in play. Remember, it's not the player, it's the football. It never comes close to the goal line, and that's going to set Purdue back inside the two yard line. And will the legend of Aiden O'Connell grow here in West Lafayette, making just his third career start? Look what he did against Nebraska and Northwestern. And now 98 yards to go against rival Indiana. Purdue has two timeouts. No run. Four bounds. Space uh -huh. ball at the one yard line, and Indiana now could be a little aggressive. They could win this with their defense. How competitive is Mullen at the corner spot? Not only tenacious in pass coverage, but at the line of scrimmage, taking down a big running back in Orbaugh. And now, with this inexperienced offensive line, you got to worry too. You get called for a hold in the end zone, that's a safety. Only one timeout remaining for IU, so they have to use it wisely here as the clock counts down almost at 1.30 left to go in this football game. O'Connell from his end zone. Downfield. Incomplete. Right was covered well by Reese Taylor. Clock stops, 1.26 to go. And if Indiana gets a stop here, they should have good field position. And wow, does that help out the Indiana defense on an incompletion. You have to be able to, to move the football throwing it, but you have to kind of stay in bounds to get that clock going. How do you play this now if you're Purdue? You have to play it aggressively. I think you have to throw the football here, looking for David Bell or your tight end, Bryson Hopkins. Those are the two guys you can count on in this situation. Purdue letting the play clock wind down. And the Boilers Third Use time their out. To time out. Purdue, their second. This would be a 30 second timeout. But both coaches told us, and Tom Allen, who is an Indiana guy, he's coached high school football in this state. He's been a D coordinator at Indiana, now the head coach. He said, This game is personal to me. It matters. You heard the pregame speech where he got his troops fired up, bringing back the bucket to Bloomington, getting to eight wins. That matters to Indiana. Their defense, which has been terrific most of the season, if they get a stop here, they're going to give the offense a real shot. They're going to get excellent field position, and that's what you need now if you're a fan of Indiana. On the other side, if you're wearing Purdue and their colors, you want to be able to move the pocket, get the ball out on time to either Hopkins or Bell. O'Connell in trouble. Gets it all. It's complete. Hopkins able to pick up the first down for Purdue. Go figure. Is Hopkins been in this fourth quarter, and how cool has Aiden O'Connell been at the quarterback spot? And he gets out of bounds. That stops the clock. 118 to go. You can't lose one of the premier playmakers that you have to stop on third and very long, and that's Bryson Hopkins coming out of the backfield. Now from the 20, O'Connell looking for Bell. The incomplete flag down, and O'Connell is down as well at the eight yard line, or rather the 12, and there are two flags back where O'Donnell was down. They may both go against the defense. Penalties have been killers for Indiana today. 
Two fouls on the defense. For pass interference, defense number three. That penalty's declined. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense for 47. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Nine penalties for 84 yards today, and there have been few personal foul penalties. Those yeah, penalties that are avoidable in some regards. That's the second one on McFadden for a personal foul on the quarterback. Boy, that just looks like a. I don't know if he, if it was helmet to helmet. I don't know if it was above. Yeah, that's, hard that's to it. On McFadden, though. Yeah, the target lowered, and, and I don't think it was the timing of the shot. I think it was the placement of it. A few years ago, that's just a, a football a play. play. Really so much emphasis these days on protecting the quarterback. So instead, a first down at the 35. Anthrop in motion. O'Connell dumps it off. He's got Horvath. Horvath to the 41. The clock will continue to run. Purdue with one timeout. Dellinger, their kicker. Purdue's got to move with some urgency here. Clock moving with 53 seconds left to go. Dellinger, the kicker, has a career long of 53. Horvath slips the initial tackle across midfield, still rumbling. And a first down that will momentarily stop the clock. 38 seconds to go. Boilermakers still have one timeout. Might want to spike the football here if you can't get a play call. Clock starts now on the official signal. Horvath again. And I don't think he got out of bounds. No, the officials giving, I think they're stopping the clock with 24 seconds remaining. They say he did get out of bounds. Look close. Well, but Purdue wasted about 10 or 12 seconds there trying to get that play called. Does he get out here? Yep. I think that was the right call. Purdue has one timeout remaining. 24 seconds left. It still comes down to Bell and Hopkins. How can you get the football to those guys in the passing game? Throwing it up in Bell's direction has been a good play all afternoon. O'Connell scrambling. He's past the line of scrimmage, and he's able to get out of bounds at the 40-yard line. 17 seconds to go. Good decisive decision by O'Connell. Once he decided it was... His decision to move the football with his legs, he got out of bounds and saved Purdue that timeout. They've got to get to, I would say, probably about the 35, 36 to have a chance, but kicking in this direction today has been problematic for both teams. It has, and I would say you might even have to get even closer, Anise, to feel comfortable with that field goal opportunity. David Bell at the bottom of your screen. O'Connell looks his way, throws his way, incomplete, it's fourth down. Pass is incomplete. Purdue has one out. timeout, 12 seconds to go, and the offense will stay out on the field. They haven't had an answer for Bryson Hopkins on the under routes or the crossing routes. That's kind of what I would be dialing up if I was Jeff Brom or I was offensive coordinator Brian Brom. Find a way to get it to your big body tight end over the middle of the field. Hopkins is lined up on the line of scrimmage toward the top of your screen. Yeah. On the slot, incomplete intended for Milton Wright. Reese Taylor broke it up with seven seconds to go. And it appears we might be heading to OT. I think so. What a play by Taylor. This is a strike by Aiden O'Connell put it right where he needed to put it. Wright just could not come down with the football. Good what route. Game. Oh, good timing. Better play by Reese Taylor from behind. What is it about these rivalry games? Because on the surface, right, Purdue, 4-7, all the injuries, it would be so easy to pack it in. And they were, boy, I would say at multiple junctures in this game, it seemed right on the edge of, of just being put away. I think Purdue did everything today they lacked to do during the season. They created explosive plays. They were able to run the football. And Indiana could not put it, put them away. This was an Indiana team 
that usually had command once it got to the fourth quarter with a lead. They couldn't do it today, and that's been the biggest story. Hoosiers have one timeout against a three-man front. Ramsey throws it downfield. He wants Westbrook, and it's broken up, and we head to overtime. And overtime as we get ready for the coin okay, toss to begin OT. Come in and greet each other. The overtime period is played at equal possessions at the opponent's 25-yard line, unless the defense were to score. Each team is allotted one timeout per overtime period. We get to a third overtime period and you score a touchdown, you got to go for two on the try. For the toss, the winner chooses offense, defense, or the end of the field. We'll use the same coin. You'll choose number or logo. Indiana, what's your choice? He's chosen number. We'll let it hit the ground. It's the logo. Purdue's won the toss. Purdue has chosen defense. Play down there. Turn your backs to your goal. Start the overtime period, it's going to be Indiana's ball, first and 10 at the 25-yard line, going that way. For Purdue defensively has been the pressure they've been able to apply to Peyton Ramsey. They've really broken the timing of the pass offense. Ramsey has time. They'll check down to Fillier. Leading the Big Ten in yards after catch. Picks up a couple. The guy that has shown up in the pass offense in the fourth quarter has been Nick Westbrook. He's been a guy that has had a couple of catches, big catches in the fourth quarter. He's an experienced receiver, especially in the red zone. That's somebody you got to keep your eye on if you're Purdue defensively. James's injury has hurt Indiana too. They haven't been able to run the ball without him. Ramsey steps up down the middle of the field. Too high. Mosley covered Westbrook, and Westbrook thought there should have been a flag. There was contact in the back of the end zone, but I'm not so sure the ball was catchable. This was over and out of the end zone, I believe. But there's a there's the pull in the back. That should have been some type of pass interference or holding call. He had a grab, a full grab of the back of the jersey of Nick Westbrook. Not reviewable, and Westbrook has a legitimate break. Ramsey again to the air. Floats that one to Marshall. It's a first down at the 11-yard line. Really nice pass protection by that offensive line for Indiana. Allowed Peyton to kind of feel a little bit more comfortable in the pocket and deliver a strike on third down. Remember, Caleb Jones has moved from right tackle to left. Devondre Love up at the right tackle position, so a makeshift offensive line for four quarters comes through on a big down from third down conversion. You're down your top two running backs. Ronnie Walker stood up. Still picked up about three. In its last three trips inside the Purdue 20, Indiana has not scored. Three of their last four. I wouldn't rule out quarterback run for Peyton Ramsey if he gets that same look here on second down. That's been the run game with Samson James out. Ramsey. Sacked! It's Barnes, his third sack of the game. This deep. 
defense in critical opportunities in this second half. They've been able to pressure the pocket, make Peyton Ramsey feel uncomfortable, and Derek Barnes has been the main reason why. We talked about the makeshift offensive line. It's finally showing signs of breaking down and Purdue five sacks on the afternoon. Coach Tom Allen got a timeout before that ball was snapped. Starts timeout, Indiana, that's their only timeout of the overtime period. This will be a 30-second timeout. Well, this is big because if you don't get the first down here or if you don't score, how much do you trust the kicking game right now? Charles Campbell, the redshirt freshman, to his credit, came on and kicked a huge field goal to get Indiana to 31 after Justice had missed three. Chris. Well, and Justice was warming up a couple minutes ago, went to the coaching staff trying to plead his case, but it seems like they're going to stick with Campbell right now because he's the one practicing. I agree with that call. I think you go with the kicker that has made a field goal today, especially in the same direction and probably around the same distance that he made it in the fourth quarter. Campbell has only attempted two kicks in his career, both this season. Both were makes from 40 plus. Third and 13 from the 14. Ramsey. End zone. Touchdown. Westbrook. In crucial situations, experience matters. You have it at quarterback, and you have it at wide receiver. In number 15, Nick Westbrook, the fifth-year senior, bottom of the screen. He's just going to run a comeback. This is, looks like a go or a fade, and he goes to the front pylon. That's just a stop route. Defensive pressure wasn't there in the pocket, nor in the end zone. And now with a conversion, IU can take a seven-point lead. It'll be justice for the PAT. And his kick is good. Indiana scores on its first possession of overtime. Purdue will have the ball, and they need a touchdown to extend the game. What a roller coaster of emotion in this football game that both sidelines have gone through. It looked like, or it felt like, Indiana had complete control of this football game midway through to late in the third quarter. And all of a sudden, Purdue, the running game, the explosive plays, the sacks on defense, the tough, tenacious pass defense that comes out of nowhere, and they find themselves in overtime only now to have to answer a touchdown with a touchdown. Indiana had a lot of chances to put this game away. You go back to the end of the first half, the Hoosiers looked like they were about to score. And then a couple of negative plays. Next thing you know, a missed field goal. It's 21-10 instead of 28-10 going into halftime. But Indiana led by 18 late in the third quarter. Jeff Brom's team, despite all the injuries, coming back. And, and listen, no pity from the Hoosiers. They've been banged up as well. Horvath having himself a career afternoon. But Michael Ziemba and Jerome Johnson get him in the backfield. A loss of four, and now Purdue behind the chains. You hate to have negative plays, especially in overtime on first down. It's tough to overcome. Too much penetration allowed by that Purdue offensive line, and credit Jerome Johnson, as you said, he's had a heck of a football game in the middle, and Ziamba on the outside was there as well. O'Connell on the move, directing traffic. Throwing downfield, he wants Hopkins, and it's broken up, no flag. Khalil Bryant with excellent coverage. Good awareness by Khalil Bryant, because when Bryson Hopkins turned up field, he caught the attention of O'Connell, and this is a, an accurate throw, maybe a little bit more out in front of the fifth-year senior tight end. This might be six points. I'll tell you what, Bryant wasn't turned back to the ball, but that arm back was in the end, right place. That's right. You have spatial awareness if you're in the secondary. That's exactly what Bryant had. David Bell lined up at the top of your screen. 
O'Connell wants Hopkins. It's off his hands. And it's caught by Anthrop. A fortuitous bounce for Purdue. And it's first and goal. It looks like Hopkins is going to have the catch. It goes off of his right knee through his hands and right into the arms of Anthrop, who's inside the 10 yard line at the five. He kept playing. That's an unbelievable play by Anthrop. You think you never want to give up on a play. He kept playing and kept his eyes up. They are going to review that last play to make sure the ball did not hit the ground. It it's looked like been that kind catch. of game, John. You're right. The ball goes off the right knee or right leg of Hopkins, and it looks like it's a clean catch around the six, five yard line by Anthro. Ball does not hit the ground there, and it does not seem to hit the ground when Anthro gets his hands under it. That's awesome camera work by our guys just to be able to stay with the football. What a game. What else can happen in this game? After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Completed catch. First down, Purdue. Right place, right time. And Purdue now with a first and goal at the Indiana 5. Indiana's had a very difficult time containing Hopkins in the red zone. Remember the two-point conversion, he was wide open. He's a big body down here, but I'd like to maybe slam Horvath into that line of scrimmage a couple of times. The second to tight end, Durham has been a weapon down here as well. O'Connell rolling out, nobody open. Throws it up into the end zone and out of the end zone, a wise decision, second and goal. Great decision by O'Connell. They were trying to use that crossing route, getting Hopkins by the back line of the end zone. Double coverage back there, and a nice decision on first down to throw that football away. Aiden O'Connell began the season as the fourth string quarterback. A walk on, 396 yards passing today, two TDs. On the fly sweep, Anthro is tackled by Taylor with a great stop in space. We've seen Taiwan Mullen on the other corner come up and aggressively tackle Horvath early in the game. This time, it's the fly sweep motion to Anthrop, and Reese Taylor comes up, and you don't do it any better than that. That's a tackle for loss on second down. Third and goal from the six. David Bell in motion. O'Connell under pressure. O'Connell. Into the end zone, dangerous pass, broken up, intended for Durham. Micah McFadden was there, and it comes down to this fourth and goal from the six. What a great job by Micah McFadden. He's beaten on the play. His back is to the quarterback. First, the escape by O'Connell. He buys himself some time. He gives his offense a catchable ball in the end zone to Durham, but watch it play through the hands and the eyes of the wide receiver. This play on a tight end, just a terrific aggressive play in the back of the end zone. The only timeout for the overtime period. This will be a 30 second timeout. We get a timeout, fourth and six, and if you're Jeff Brom, what do you draw? I go back to the two point play that I ran earlier in the game. You had Indiana and their back and their defense backs and linebackers confused with the formation. They lost the tight end, Bryson Hopkins, and he was wide open. I go back to that exact same play here on fourth down. I think by design, Jeff Brom had him outmanned and had him confused. You've got guys going in and out, and then you've got a delay with Hopkins coming in, and no one was close to him. No one was in five yards of the tight end for the two-point conversion. What's Indiana telling its defense? Be disciplined, pressure the pocket, play as hard as you can for four, four seconds because that's all it should take. High discipline because you never know who's going to come out of inside out on the formation by Jeff Brown. 
Horvath motions out. Fourth down. O'Connell. Exact play. Same play. And it's Hopkins. It's a lot better. That was a great execution, execution on the two-point conversion play this time for the touchdown. And now you need to tack on an extra point to make it go into the second overtime. Dellinger's kick is good, and we have double overtime. The winner gets a P or I link added to the chain of the bucket with the score, the date, and the location of the game. And we are now in overtime number two to decide whether the Old Oaken bucket stays in West Lafayette or goes to Bloomington with the Hoosiers. Purdue will have the ball to start the second overtime from the 25, Horvath in the backfield. Aiden O'Connell on the slant, low throw. He's got David Bell for a gain of six. Nice catch by Bell on the perimeter. You just want to get it close if you're a quarterback. You had a lot of cushion on the outside, so a positive play on first down. 35 catches in his last three games for Bell, a true freshman. Horvath, a yard shy, it's third down. This is the area coming into this football game that had plagued Purdue and their offense on the ground, but not today. They've been able to run the football at will on third and one, third and two. Now some people around with the team were joking with us the way this season has gone. Third and seven at times has been more apt to what Purdue does than third and one. Orban trying to spin his way forward. And he stopped its fourth down for the Boilermakers. You got to kick the field goal here, don't you? I would think so. I think you have to take the points. Put the onus on your defense in, in Indiana to score. Doesn't look like the special teams are coming on. Now, here they come. The risk you run is you made, you waited so long to make this decision. You, want, you don't want to pressure your kicker. You may have to take a timeout here. I would. I would take a timeout. And Jeff Brom does just that. Your only timeout for this overtime period. This will be a 30 second timeout. Now, this is how we got here. Into the hands of Jackson Anthrop and then Bryson Hopkins, his second receiving touchdown on fourth and goal to send this game into double overtime. A game that Indiana led 28 to 10 with less than four minutes to play in the third quarter. Some struggles by the Hoosiers in the red zone, kicking issues for Indiana. Gave Purdue a chance. The Boilermakers have never led in this game. To their credit, they kept fighting and finding a way to inch closer. But Indiana had a chance to put this football game away on multiple opportunities and did not finish once they got an opportunity either in the kicking game or in the red zone to score six. So Dellinger to give Purdue its first lead of the game. His kick for 34 is good. Purdue leading for the first time today. Now Indiana can win it with a touchdown. Solid job up front. The kick is true. And it's Purdue's first lead of the afternoon that's coming into evening in double overtime. Following our game will get you to Miami. You said it at the top of the broadcast. You ride emotion into a rivalry game. 
Then emotion dissipates, and it's about discipline. Second overtime. What does it come down to now? Execution. You have to be able to execute on offense, and if you're Purdue on defense, you have to find a way to tackle in space. Ramsey to throw. He's got Ronnie Walker. He takes it to the 15-yard line. A first down for Indiana. Derek Walls the tackle. Showed man coverage, and now they're going to go to zone. Ramsey to the end zone, incomplete. I think Indiana had a man beater play on. They were waiting for Purdue to stay in man coverage. Defensive coordinator Nick Moore comes out in zone, and Ramsey did the wise thing to throw the football away. That was a good disguise because the Purdue defense waited until the last moment to show zone. Rock Fillier's had a good game. Eight catches, 138 yards. He's in the slot nearest the line of scrimmage. I come out on two posts and take your pick. Purdue loading up the box. They'll bring pressure. Incomplete behind Westbrook. And another Purdue player down on second down. Without their leading rusher today, and without their number two back, Samson James, who left this game with an injury. That's why I think you need to rely on Fillier and Westbrook here on third down. Purdue again showing pressure. Now they're going to bounce out of it. His own cover. Fillier motions. Ramsey has Henderson inside the five. And he takes it to the one-yard line. And if Indiana can punch it in, they'll take the bucket to Bloomington. I think they go quarterback sneak here with a quick snap. Ramsey, QB keeper, gets the push. And Indiana has 